Yom Tov. Good day. This is Stephen Brook. Oh, I didn't adjust my glasses, so there's all this glare. Hold on. There we go. How you doing? Today is the second day of June 2020. And before I start, let me inform those of you who may not know, I served as a first lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps. Three and a half years active service and a year in the reserves. And because I serve this country, I have the right, actually as, all do, as do all Americans, to talk about what is wrong with it. And there is a lot wrong with it. We have kicked God out of our courtrooms and schools, almost made it a crime to pray in public, gone out of our way to prevent godly worship because it offends those who reject and hate God. And our youth are not only ill-prepared for adulthood, but they are being taught anarchy and disrespect for authority by the very examples of authority within our culture. Their teachers, professors, and political leaders. Not to mention that in the very heart of our democracy we have elected officials who are against democracy, against Israel, and against the system of government that made this country the greatest example of freedom in the world. Notice I said made, not makes. We used to be the land of the free and the home of the brave, but today we are the land of the frightened and the home of the cowardly. So, should we pray for America? Well, I'm sure most every person who professes to be a worshiper of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will say, yes, of course, we should, because prayer is what we do when we need God to intervene. But have you considered this? Does God want to intervene? Maybe, just maybe, this is all part of God's plan. We read in the Tanakh about the Acharit Hayamim, the end days. And in the book of Revelation, we are given the most detailed account of what to expect. Of course, there have been doomsday warners since the first report of doomsday. But I can't help to think that we are really close this time. Logically, since the end days are still to come, every day brings us closer. <clears throat> but today there is so much distress fear and anxiety in the world, it just seems ready to explode. So no, should we pray for God to intervene and save America? I say don't bother because this is all part of what God has planned for us. He told us about it. He's making it happen. And to pray for him to stop and change his mind, well, it's almost like refusing to cooperate. Yes, I know Moses intervened for the Israelites more than once to ask God to change his mind about destroying the people, and he did. But this is different. They were a newly freed people who did not know their God. We have had thousands of years of God showing us who he is and what he wants us to do, so we don't have that excuse. You know, the very last request being made of God in the Bible which we find at the very end of the book of Revelation, is for Yeshua to come. I think just about everyone looks forward to that, but I also think too many ignore what must happen before he comes. That part no one wants to deal with, but it is here now, and we have to deal with it. I, I feel such sorrow for those who do not know the Lord God or Yeshua, my own people, the Jewish people, God's chosen, have not really rejected Yeshua as much as they have been conditioned to reject anything about him. They have been taught to reject him, and as such, they don't really reject him from knowledge, but from training and conditioning. But to God and Yeshua, rejection is rejection, no matter what the reason. So I pray for my own people and my family, loved ones and friends, who do not know Yeshua really and know who he really is, to be made aware of him before the shoe drops. That is why I've written the books I've written, so that people can make an informed decision about where they want to spend eternity. The reason we are here, the reason we are given this time on earth, is to decide 
where we will spend eternity. And the time left to decide is running out. Hey, if you want to pray for America, as far as I'm concerned, don't waste your time of God's praying for peace or for relief from disease because we're past that point. However, you can pray for the repentance of the people. Ask God to spread a spirit of repentance so that the people will realize what they have done, how they have rejected and disrespected God and his instructions to us, and for them to do teshuva, to turn from their sins. Peace will not come to an unrepentant people. So if you want to pray, pray for America to repent, for that is the only way God will forgive us. Learn the lesson from the book of Jonah. God relented of his destruction of Assyria only after they repented, truly repented of their sins. America has become a sinful and godless society. And until we change that, we will not be spared the destruction that God will send to all who reject and deny him. Personally, I don't think America is going to get out of this one unscathed. God is taking aim, the safety is off, and his finger is on the trigger. My friends, I really think the hammer is about to drop. Thank you for being here. I'm sorry about the bad news I had to spread today. No one likes to talk about destruction, but if we don't, then aren't we ignoring God's warning? So until next time, God willing that we're all still here. Lehi trot and Baruch Hashem.